What's up guys, welcome to Screen Pop. Today we're going to show you Passengers, a 2016 sci-fi romance and drama film. Since we will be talking about this movie in depth, beware big spoilers flying your way. The interstellar starship Avalon can be seen traveling in space on its way to Homestead 2, a colonized world. The ship's rooms are all vacant and it's on autopilot. The 258 staff members and 5,000 passengers have gone into hibernation. The spacecraft suddenly travels through an asteroid belt, damaging its shields. The ship's power is redirected to the main shield, but it's on the verge of colliding with a massive asteroid. The asteroid collides with the spacecraft unexpectedly, creating many problems. One of the hibernation pods activates and the spacecraft begins self-repairs. Jim Preston, a mechanical engineer, is the passenger who has been woken. When his pod opens, an automatic device assists him in waking up, informing him that he has been in suspended animation for 120 years and that the ship is just 4 months away reaching Homestead 2. He's been assured that he'd be able to spend that time relaxing and enjoying the ship's perks. Prior to his arrival on the planet, Jim receives information regarding his ID band, his cabin and the major activities he will be participating in. He gets ready, exits his cabin and walks into an automated lesson designed for an entire learning group, both excited and scared to meet the others aboard the ship. As the hologram describes the condition on Earth as overcrowded, expensive and overvalued, Jim seems a bit concerned. It urges him to wait until the conclusion of the lesson to ask questions, but Jim keeps wondering why he's the only one there. He learns the hologram is incapable of responding to him and sets out to find other individuals. He makes his way into the ship's main lobby. Jim ultimately makes his way to the observatory, where he discovers that the spacecraft is actually 90 years distant from Homestead 2. He realizes he awoke too soon and runs back to the concourse, where he sends a message to Earth wondering what he should do because he doesn't know how to return to hibernation. The communication system warns him that the expensive call to Earth will take 55 years to receive a response. Jim is heartbroken. He goes about till he comes across the ship's bar, where he notices another individual. Something odd seems to be going on with him as he's chatting to the bartender. Jim knows he's an android as he tries to bring him a drink. It's known as Arthur. Jim wants to get more information from him, but he couldn't even explain to the android how he can be there ahead of time. The next day, Jim wakes up in his cabin and walks to the cantina, where he immediately discovers that the most of the items on the menu are only available to the gold-class travelers. He makes himself a cup of ordinary coffee and attempts to find out how to repair his hibernation chamber. After gathering all of the necessary equipment, he manages to turn it on and lies down inside the pod. However, nothing occurs. He then chooses to utilize the equipment he discovered to get access to the crew's sleep chambers. Small malfunctions occur throughout the ship. Jim keeps going back to the pub, primarily to chat with Arthur. The android gives him some advice, which persuades him to break into the gold classrooms and have some fun on the ship. Jim investigates all of the restaurants, games and entertainment systems. But as time passes, he grows increasingly dissatisfied with being alone. He gets drunk one day and wanders about the sleep pods until he comes upon an airlock containing spacesuits built for spacewalks. Jim gets into a suit and proceeds to the airlock, where he presses a lever and then a button to open the airlock door. He's shocked by the scene after he stepped outside the ship. He's the sole aware human being at that location at that time. Jim releases the magnets on his boots and floats in space heartbroken. He returns inside, removes the suit and then returns to the airlock without it. He pushes the lever ready to put an end to it all but changes his mind at the last second, dashes back inside and slips on a bottle. Jim gets to his feet and is captivated by Aurora, a lady in one of the pods. He looks through the directory for the files and listens to her passenger interview, falling in love with her. He was later observed sitting next to her pod, still listening to her interviews. Back at the bar, he's reading some of her work and discussing it with Arthur. 
he gets fascinated with the absurdity of his position, traveling to another planet in search of a better life, waking up early and failing to arrive, and meeting his ideal girlfriend only to find her beyond reach. Jim continues to think about her and begins to consider waking her up as well. He discusses it with the android, but he doesn't grasp the problem. If he wakes her up for his own advantage, he'll be stranding her aboard the ship with him to perish. Jim first decides against it, but as time passes he can't let it go, until he changes his mind one day. He walks to her pod and successfully activates it. He hides and returns to his room when she awakens and goes through the same procedure he did. Later he walks to the same concourse hoping to find her. And there she is, still as perplexed as he was a year ago. Jim informs her that they are the only ones awake and drives her to the observatory. Then he informs her that he is unable to contact the crew or the ship's primary commands. Aurora panics and wishes to return to her pod. When they arrive, Jim informs her that there is no special equipment aboard the spacecraft that can assist them in returning to hibernation effectively, telling her that they are trapped. They return to the concourse and he advises her to relax because she has just emerged from hibernation. She feels terrible for him since he has been alone on the ship for more than a year. Jim returns to the pub feeling bad about what he did. He requests that Arthur does not inform Aurora that he was the one who awakened her up. Aurora awakens the next day. She returns to the concourse and inquires about the hibernation pods at the automated information desk. Jim joins her there and the two of them proceed to have breakfast. As they leave, there is a problem with the information desk. Aurora notices in the cantina that Jim has been eating the same breakfast for over a year and orders him one of the gold class meals. They discuss the possibilities of repairing the pods, but Aurora, unlike Jim, isn't ready to give up. She examines the infirmary, then research documents before arriving at the crew's hibernation rooms and attempting to burst the door open. More flaws are discovered throughout the ship by Jim. Aurora regrets her existence on the Avalon some months later. She rides, jogs around the ship and swims in the pool, becoming increasingly aware of her predicament. She goes back to the cantina to interview Jim since she thinks his tale would be intriguing. She inquires as to why he came to the colony. Jim responds with business slogans at first, but then he goes on to say that he thinks that in the new world he can be somebody and establish a life. Later they arrive to the observatory, where Aurora finally reveals why she's there. She, unlike the other people on board, has a round-trip ticket. Her plan was to travel to Homestead 2, live there for a year, and then return to Earth, becoming the first journalist to do so and write the greatest story ever written. Aurora gradually gives up on finding a solution to their current dilemma, and Jim devises a plan to cheer her up. He brings her out to dance, to the movies, and to the basketball court. Eventually, he brings her to the bar to meet Arthur. She takes a deep breath and relaxes for a moment before realizing their position. Jim is left alone with the robot, regretting what he's done to her. The next thing we know, he's working with something and Aurora goes into the observatory to see a miniature of the Chrysler building he built for her. They go on a date at the pub later on. They have dinner and tell each other stories about their life. She informs him that her father died when she was an adolescent. After supper, Jim takes Aurora to the airlock where they put on their spacesuits. They embark on a spacewalk together. Jim has finally found someone with whom he can share his amazing experience. Jim turns off the magnets on their boots and they float in space together. They return inside, kiss, retreat to his cabin and sleep together. Soon after, they begin to live as a couple. Aurora goes into his cabin and begins writing about her experience on the cruise. They go jogging, dine and sleep together. Jim continues his exploration of the spacecraft and discovers the hydroponics area. He gives flowers to Aurora. The ship passes by a red giant one day, and they go to the observatory to observe it. 
Aurora's birthday is later that night, so they celebrate at one of the ship's various restaurants and subsequently the bar. While Aurora is at the bar speaking with Arthur, Jim goes to the restroom to prepare the ring he made for her. The android informs Aurora that Jim purposely awakened her up, unaware that he was supposed to keep it a secret. Suddenly, Jim appears and she approaches him in astonishment. She flees enraged and terrified. When Jim returns to his cabin, he discovers that all of her belongings have vanished. The next day, he runs into her at the cantina but the minute he talks, she flees. Aurora is in a difficult situation. She goes over to Jim's cabin one night, beating and kicking him and threatening to murder him. Jim attempts to apologize and explain his behavior to her over the calm because she continues to ignore him. He tells her that he has fallen in love with her, but Aurora seems unconcerned. She is unable to forgive him for stealing her life. Another problem occurs one night while Jim is at his cabin. The ship is experiencing a major malfunction and the main command is shutting down. Later, he enters the elevator which is malfunctioning. Aurora enters the main concourse and notices Jim has planted a tree there. She then walks to the cantina where the food dispensary is also broken. Suddenly both of them hear the deck chief's voice over the comms, inquiring who planted the tree. They both hurry into the concourse and see Gus Mancuso standing in front of Jim's tree. They present themselves and inform the chief of the situation. He doesn't comprehend how three pods could fail. Mancuso leads them to the bridge where he learns that something is wrong with the spacecraft, but the information on the systems must be examined manually. When they leave the bridge, a robot almost falls on their heads, and the two of them inform Mancuso that glitches have become more common throughout the ship. He assures them that this will not happen as he demonstrates how to acquire the data. Jim joins Mancuso as he checks the pods. He's discovered what happened to Aurora's pod. The deck chief regards Jim's actions as vile. Later, he's at the bridge reviewing the data he's gathered when Aurora joins him. They speak about what occurred with her pod, but he tells her he can't help her. Jim enters the room carrying the 16th broken robot. Marcuso feels sick from hibernating, so he goes to bed, but as he comes out, he spits up blood. Aurora can't sleep that night, so she goes swimming. Suddenly, there is a lack of gravity throughout the ship, and she begins to drown as the water from the pool moves with her. The gravity drive is reset and she narrowly escapes alive. They both run into each other while looking for Marcuso. They're all back on the bridge, slowly figuring out what's going on with the ship. Marcuso discovered that something happened two years ago, causing a critical system to fail. They must determine and repair the source of the malfunction, while the entire ship is attempting to take up the slack. If they do not repair it, the entire ship will be stranded. They proceed to investigate the situation, but Marcuso passes out, so Jim and Aurora take him to the infirmary. He's dying, and there are no medications that can slow it or prolong the time he has left. Some time later, the three of them meet in the observatory and Marcuso hands Jim his ID bracelet, instructs them to repair the ship, and then dies. Suddenly, the lights turn an unsettling crimson, and the ship begins to shake. Jim informs Aurora that he requires her assistance, and the two of them sprint to engineering, but the gravity drive fails again. And then there's another one that affects Arthur as well. Jim turns it off. They eventually make it to engineering and begin looking for the problem. They discover it in the power plant, and Aurora is pulled in as they open the hatch. The asteroid has created a hull breach in that location. Jim is drawn in as well, but he grabs onto the hatch as it closes in on him. He eventually gets drafted in as well, but they soon close the gap. Jim immediately notices that there is more than one breach in the hull after resolving that issue. They track the meteor's path and discover that it collided with the reactor control computer. Jim believes he can locate new components for it. They locate and replace the part, but the process of venting the reactor continues to fail. They do it manually, but it fails once more. Jim realizes that he must open the vent door from the exterior of the spacecraft in order to cool the reactor. Both of them proceed to the airlock, and as he is about to leave, he hands Aurora Marcuso's bracelet to her because he might not return. 
She assists him with the suit and tells him to return as he steps through the airlock because she can't survive on the ship without him. Aurora returns to the reactor where the temperature has reached dangerous levels. As Jim approaches the vent from the outside and notices the door, a bolt from the reactor slams into her arm. The temperature increases in the reactor room as he tries to open the vent door by bypassing it. He quickly learns that he must physically hold the door open so that the reactor can vent and he informs Aurora of this. She opposes the proposal, but he goes ahead with it and instructs her to vent the reactor. She doesn't want him to die and they argue, but he reminds her that they need to save the others, so she vents the reactor. The procedure is accomplished, but the gases from the reactor push Jim away, causing his tether to snap. The pressure in his suit is also decreasing. He informs Aurora what occurred, and she rushes to go to another suit and bring him in. He apologizes to her once more. She dresses up and flies out to get him, but her tether is too short. She's being dragged back, but she suddenly grabs his rope and pulls him in. Aurora takes Jim inside the infirmary, only to discover that he is already dead. She uses Marcuso's wristband to bypass medical procedures and resurrect him. Jim is revived by the medical pod, which handles all of the job automatically. Aurora accepts his apology. Aurora later repairs Arthur, and they give Marcuso a suitable space burial. Jim brings her to the infirmary and informs her that he has discovered a method to utilize the medical pod as a hibernation pod. He instructs her to enter the pod and spend the remainder of the voyage inside. But, as it's subsequently revealed, she rejects and chooses to remain awake on the ship with him. Jim eventually proposes to her, and they spend the rest of their lives on the ship. The Avalon lands on Homestead 2 88 years later. The crew awakens to find the ship in an unexpected state. Aurora leaves them a note informing them about her and Jim's time aboard the ship while the rest of them slept. Thanks for watching everyone! Please make sure to give the video a like and subscribe with that bell on to get notified as soon as one of our videos comes out.